Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students uh, so uh, today we will um, uh, again continue with our examples on directional derivative it's a very interesting topic so that's why uh, i'm trying to cover um, as many examples as possible motivated from directional derivative and um, level surfaces tangent planes and things like that so today we will continue with the example which we left off last time so in the last class we had a problem on directional derivative which was uh, um, this one so what is the greatest rate of change uh, for the function u x y z equals to x y z square at the point 1 0 3 all right so let's start with this uh, problem here so the given function the given scalar function or the given uh, function simply is u x y z equals to x y z square so then here then gradient of u is equals to del u del x times i del u del y times j and del u del z times k so what is del u del x it's uh, y z square times i and uh, del y del u del y would be x z square uh, j and del u del z is 2 x y z k all right so that's our gradient of u and now at the point uh, uh, therefore 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 at the point 1 0 3 the gradient of u is we can write gradient of u at the point p is equals to y z square so the j component would be z, uh, i component would be 0 because y is 0 j component would be 3 square and uh, k component would again be 0 so basically 9 j right so that is our so basically 9 j so that is our gradient of u at the point p now we have to calculate the greatest rate of change the greatest rate of change or rate of increase of u that means we have to calculate the maximum value so we have to calculate the maximum value of f at the point at the point 103 so greatest uh, greatest rate of change or greatest rate of increase is nothing but the maximum value of dfds because dfds is the rate of change of f right so uh, this uh, greatest rate of increase is nothing but the maximum value of f at the point 103 now as i was speaking in the previous class that the maximum value of dfds will be attained if we consider the vector a as gradient of f so if we are calculating the directional derivative along the direction of gradient then the, the i mean that's the basically the maximum rate of change or maximum value of dfds will be attained so that means uh, here here uh, what we will have is we will have gradient of u at the point p dot product with uh, gradient of u at the point p divided by gradient of u at the point p so if we consider uh, the, the 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 vector a cap as gradient of u by gra mod of gradient of u so that's where the maximum value would be attained and here we can take the dot product so ultimately we will be left with gradient of u at the point p mod because uh, this will be mod of gradient of u at the point p divided by gradient of u at the point p and one of them will get cancelled out so we will have basically gradient of u um, so i'm just avoiding p now so we will basically obtain gradient of u at the point p 
and uh, this value is nothing but mod of 9 j right we have already calculated this value here so i substitute gradient of u at the point p as uh, let me write it as 9 j and this mod is nothing but 9 because it will be square, uh, square root of 0 square plus 1 square plus again 0 square and uh, um, instead of uh, the second component is basically 9 square it is not 1 square. So, the second component is 9 square. So, square root uh, out of square root it will become again 9 and the rest of the term will be 1. So, ultimately that is our uh, required uh, maximum or greatest rate of uh, increase for the function f at the point p equals to 1 0 3. So, this is the required answer. So, this is um, a very vital thing to know that in which direction the maximum rate of change is occurring and that is the direction of actually gradient of f. So, if instead of any other vector if you consider the vector a as gradient of f then along that the uh, then along the direction of uh, gradient of f the maximum rate of change or the maximum value of df ds would be attained. So, you do not have to calculate any other thing if it is says that calculate the directional derivative along the uh, direction of maximum rate of change. So, all you have to do is calculate the gradient of the function at the point p and then take its mod and that will be the required answer like in this case what we have obtained all right. Now, let us consider an another example. Example I have lost the track. So, I am just writing example 4 all right. Now, in this case show that the directional derivative directional derivative of a scalar point function at any point along any tangent line to the level surface at that point is 0. So, what here says is that we have a scalar point function let us say f and uh, we want to calculate the directional derivative along any tangent line to the level surface. So, uh, if we have any tangent line to the level surface and if we are calculating the directional derivative along that tangent line then in that case that directional derivative would be 0. So, uh, this uh, this will be true for any kind of uh, level surface uh, f x y z equals to c. If we calculate the directional derivative along the tangent uh, uh, line then in that case it will be always 0. So, let us see how we can prove that. So, we will start with let f x y z be a scalar point function and uh, let a cap be a unit vector along a tangent line to the level surface and the equation of the level surface is f x y z equals to c. So, we assume that f x y z be the scalar point function and a cap be the unit vector along the direction of tangent line to the surface f x y z equals to c. So, this is our required level surface. So, this is this this up to this uh, we assume. So, now we know that we know that gradient of f is a normal vector at any point of the surface
f x y z equals to c right. Therefore, the vectors gradient of f and a cap must be perpendicular to one another. So, this is very simple if a cap is the unit vector and uh, if a cap is along the direction of tangent line. So, we have a vector along the tangent line and a gradient of f. Now, remember the directional derivative to calculate the directional derivative we always need that gradient of f at a certain point p dot product with a cap where a cap is the unit vector in the direction uh, at the, in the direction of which we are calculating the directional derivative. Now, if a cap is along the direction of tangent line and since gradient of f is normal to the level surface f x y z equals to c then in that case gradient of f must be normal or must be perpendicular to a cap because a cap is in is along the direction of tangent line and we have a perpendicular vector on the surface. So, it, it is uh, perpendicular to the tangent line as, as well and therefore, it is perpendicular to that a cap as well. So, that is what we are saying therefore, the vectors gradient of f and a cap must be perpendicular to one another, but from the condition of perpendicularity by the condition of perpendicularity of perpendicularity we have gradient of f dot a cap must be 0 because they are perpendicular to one another their dot product must be 0 and if their dot product is 0 then the directional derivative directional derivative of f is given by d f at the point p is equals to gradient of f dot product with a cap and this is 0 and therefore, the directional derivative of the function f along any tangent line uh, in the direction of any tangent line is always equals to 0 because gradient of f and that uh, vector along the tangent line are mainly perpendicular to each other and therefore, this is our required result. Um, Next problem is motivated from the level surface and the tangent plane normal to the surface. All right. So, let me write the problem. So, find the equation of the tangent plane. and normal to the surface two x z square minus three x y minus four x equals to seven So, the given equation of the surface is, so we have to calculate the tangent plane and the normal for this uh, surface. So, these, these now we are we are doing both types of examples though. So, the examples motivated from uh, directional derivative and examples motivated from level surfaces. So, I am trying to solve uh, examples on both of these two topics one by one. So, the given surface is So, we have we can calculate first of all gradient of f. So, gradient of f is del f del x i del f del y j plus del f del z k. So, now del f del x is um, we will basically obtain 
2 z square minus 3 y minus 4 times i then del f del y is minus of 3 x times j and del f del z is 4 x z minus 0 minus 0. So, this is ultimately k and k is anyway 0. So, this is our gradient of f and now we have to calculate the tangent plane and the normal at the point 1 minus 1 and 2. So, calculating normal is not difficult because uh, we know that gradient of f is normal to the surface gradient uh, is normal to the surface f x y z equals to c. So, basically the this gradient will act as a normal for the given function f x y z and uh, gradient of f at the point p 1 minus 1 2 we substitute the values here and ultimately we will be able to obtain 7 i minus 3 j plus 8 k. So, this is the required um, directional derivative uh, sorry the, the uh, normal for the function f at the point 1 minus 1 and 2 all right. But calculating tangent plane is little bit um, how to say time taking. So, we now calculate the tangent plane. So, if r equals to x i plus y j plus z k be the position vector be the position vector of any point be the position vector of any point let us say p x y z on the tangent plane on the tangent plane right. Then the vector uh, let me write it as capital R. So, since we are using capital R, I will use capital X i, capital Y j and capital Z k. So, this one is also capital X, capital Y. Sorry, I did not pay attention here. So, since I am using capital R, it is better to use capital X, capital Y, capital Z, uh, capital Z. So, then the vector capital R minus small r is uh, perpendicular. So, this is from uh, coordinate geometry perpendicular to the vector gradient of f right. So, we have uh, a ta so, we have basically um, a tangent. So, we have basically this vector r which is uh, capital X i capital Y j plus uh, capital Z k uh, be the position vector of any point x y z on the tangent plane and um, then the vector r minus uh, capital r minus small r is perpendicular to the vector gradient of f because anything you have on the tangent plane will be by default perpendicular to grad gradient of f because gradient of f is normal to the function f x y z equals to c. So, if you have a tangent plane uh, on f x y z equals to c then that tangent plane will always be perpendicular to the gradient of f. So, even if you take this difference it will always be perpendicular all right. So, now um, capital R is our x i plus y j plus z k right and minus what is this small r? The small r is given as this point. So, we are calculating the tangent plane at a certain point p and that point is this one 1 minus 1 and 2. So, I can write uh, i minus j plus 2 k right and okay here I have then the equation of the tangent plane. So, this I, I forgot to write this. So, the equation of the tangent plane 
is gradient of f is dot product with capital R minus small r equals to 0. So, um, this is the required uh, equation of the uh, gradient of the tangent plane. So, uh, now I am writing capital R minus small r is this one dot product with gradient of f is uh, we have already calculated 7 i minus 3 j plus 7 i minus 3 j 7 i minus 3 j plus 8 k. So, just that gradient of f is this one and uh, r minus capital R is this one because um, uh, dot product is commutative. So, we can actually exchange them and now if I calculate this. So, this will be 7 uh, 7 x minus 1 minus 3 y plus 1 plus 8 z minus 2 equals to 0. So, the required equation therefore, the required equation So, this is the equation of the tangent plane and the and uh, we put uh, we gave the normal vector. Now, we want to write the equation of that normal vector. So, the required equation of the normal to the surface the normal to the surface at the point 1 minus 1 2 is x minus 1 by del f del x is equals to y plus 1 by del f del y is equals to z minus 2 by del f del z. And now, del f del x is basically our 7 del f del y is minus 3 and uh, z minus 2 del f del z is 8 and this is so basically um, these two. Uh, so, this is the ta ta tangent plane equation of the tangent plane, this is the equation of the normal and these two what we had to calculate. So, calculating this uh, tangent uh, plane or normal vector uh, those are not complicated it is just that uh, we have to use uh, some tricks from vector calculus and also from uh, coordinate geometry to so that we can be able to write the equation of the tangent plane and the equation of the normal. So, this was uh, an another example where we were supposed to calculate the tangent plane and the normal you can be asked uh, I can write an another example, but I will uh, of course, leave it as a task for the students. So, example 5. So, find the equations of the normal equations of the normal and the tangent plane equation of the normal and the and the tangent plane for the surface f x y z equals to x y z equals to 4 at the point 1 2 2 2. So, here in this example also uh, we have to calculate the equation of the normal and the tangent plane for the surface f x y z equals to x y z equals to 4 at the point 1 2 2 2. Uh, so, here in this case also we will calculate the gradient and then we calculate uh, um, the calculate the equation of the tangent plane and from gradient uh, we have to calculate uh, 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 in such a way. So, uh, in, in the gradient itself we have to calculate uh, the equation of the the equation of the uh, uh, equation of the uh, tangent plane in such a way that we can be able to write this thing here r uh, gradient grad of f times r minus uh, capital r minus small r 
so that we can be able to obtain the equation of the tangent plane in this fashion and then the equation of the normal to the surface at this point 1 minus 1 2 can be given by this uh, x minus 1 divided by del f del x y plus 1 divided by del f del y z minus 2 divided by del f del z and uh, just equate the coefficients for del f del x del f del y and del f del z and then divide them by 7 3 uh, 7 minus 3 and 8 and that will give you the required equation of the uh, required, required equation of the normal and the tangent plane is already given so this is how we calculate uh, the direction uh, this is how we calculate the no tangent and normal um, a tangent plane and normal of a given scalar function f at a certain point p and uh, in the next class i will try to solve one more example on directional derivative before we move on to our next topic so um, today uh, we'll stop here and uh, i thank you for your attention and uh, i look forward to your uh, next class thank you <laughs>